Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's lesson on MRI contrast principles. This lesson will discuss how to differentiate between areas of high and low signal, how MRI images obtain contrast, and the factors that impact T1 and T2 relaxation. It is important to understand these concepts as they will inform the parameters used during MRI scans. Signal intensity on an MRI image represents the amount of signal a particular tissue returns. Signal intensity is what creates contrast on an MRI image. Tissues can appear bright in areas of high signal or hyperintensity, dark in areas of low signal or hypointensity, or in shades of gray in areas of intermediate signal, depending on their characteristics and the type of MRI sequence used. The amount or intensity of signal that a tissue can produce is determined by T1 recovery, T2 decay, and proton density. Remember, T1 recovery or longitudinal relaxation is the process of protons realigning with B sub zero after being flipped out of alignment by a radio frequency excitation pulse. T2 decay or transverse relaxation is the process of protons dephasing with one another as they move out of the transverse plane. Since different tissues have different T1 recovery and T2 decay times, they will appear differently on an MRI image. TR controls T1 contrast and TE controls T2 contrast. For example, if a pulse sequence has a long TE, tissues with long T2 decay times, like cerebrospinal fluid, will emit more signal and appear brighter on the MRI image. T1 and T2 relaxation and TR and TE contrast parameters are covered in depth in other lessons. Think of it like this. You're a photographer at a racetrack. One of the cars is going much faster than the other. You can't change the speed that the car is going, but you can decide when you take the picture. If you're very fast at taking the picture, you capture the fast car. If you wait longer to take the picture, you capture the slow car. This is similar to TR and TE. You can't control T1 recovery or T2 decay, but you can change when an RF pulse is emitted and when the echo occurs. The relaxation times T1 recovery and T2 decay are influenced by the physical and biochemical environment of the tissues being imaged. Two key factors affecting these times are the molecular tumbling rate and the density of molecular packing. Molecular tumbling rate is how quickly molecules rotate or tumble. Molecular tumbling determines the efficiency of the energy exchange between the hydrogen nuclei and the surrounding molecular lattice or environment. If the surrounding molecules in the lattice have a tumbling rate that matches the Larmor frequency of the hydrogen nuclei, then the energy exchange is efficient. If the surrounding molecules in the lattice have a tumbling rate that does not match the Larmor frequency, then the energy exchange is not as efficient. This impacts the T1 recovery process. When energy exchange is efficient, T1 recovery occurs quickly. When energy exchange is inefficient, T1 recovery occurs more slowly. The density of molecular packing, or how closely the molecules are packed together, impacts the T2 decay process. In environments with slower-moving molecules that stay near one another longer, like in fat, there is more opportunity for interaction between the magnetic moments of neighboring hydrogen nuclei. In environments where molecules are moving quickly and do not stay near each other for long, like in water, there is less opportunity for interaction between the magnetic moments of neighboring hydrogen nuclei. When molecules stay close together, T2 decay occurs quickly. When molecules move away from one another, T2 decay occurs more slowly. Proton density refers to the concentration of hydrogen protons in a tissue. Tissues with high proton density, such as gray matter in the brain, emit more signal because more protons are available to be excited by the radio frequency pulse, influencing overall image contrast. Bone, on the other hand, 
has lower proton density because there is minimal water in bone, so there are less available hydrogen nuclei to be excited by the radio frequency pulse. In summary, signal intensity represents the amount of signal a particular tissue returns. Tissues can appear bright in hyperintense areas of signal, dark in hypointense areas of signal, and varying shades of gray in intermediate areas of signal. The amount of signal that a tissue can produce is determined by T1 recovery, T2 decay, and proton density. T1 recovery and T2 decay are influenced by molecular tumbling rate and the density of molecular packing.